So why is Viptala being installed on Cisco router such a big deal? And I don't think people have quite worked out just how critical this is to making things right at Cisco. That's what I want to talk to you about today. So Cisco recently announced that the Viptela code is now available as an SD-WAN product on the Cisco iOS XE code train, which is, I think, just fantastic. Uh, for customers out there who have Cisco routers, and I, I saw numbers go to around about a million routers that are actually out there and capable. I think that's first fantastic because first of all, for a lot of customers, this means they don't actually have to go out and test the market. They can look at their existing routers, go back to their managers, like line managers, their IT managers, and say, it's just a simple upgrade to the existing code train. You don't really need to uh, get in there and sort that sort of thing out. This means it's a lot simpler to get the funding for companies to get the benefits of this capability. They can just go out there get the code upgrade done and then roll out the project as an upgrade without having to go out. Arguably it's better to get onto a newer SD-WAN hardware platform, that is most SD-WAN providers are offering low cost capabilities using cheap x86 boxes and you take them out of sight and they're literally like uh, little mini x86 servers just packed in, they've got four or five hardware port, uh, Ethernet ports inside them and away they go. Now, it would be much better to do that. They often have much more capability than, a, than an older Cisco router like an ASR and an ISR. Those are x86 servers in their own right, but more modern hardware, white box, often much better, I think, in my opinion, we could argue the point. Customers are often trapped in the mindset that site installs are very difficult. Certainly our experience with deploying custom routers on site is very difficult. It's not very easy. Some of these modern x86 appliances are much easier to deploy and much easier to manage. And that's really the future of where we want to be, I think, is in that sort of idea. But if you're trapped in the mindset that installing a new device is something that's hard to do and difficult to get right, do not underestimate just how important it is that Cisco's managed to give something to customers that they want to buy. So it's easy to buy, easy to convince the people to get a project. It's, you could sell it as just an upgrade even though it's actually a massive change. Now this also matters for MSPs. A lot of managed service providers actually take in Cisco routers and then manage them on behalf of customers. So the routers are managed by the customers, that's owned by the customers, but managed by a service provider. They will be able to go back to customers and tap on their door and say, please give me something better. Give me a, a solution that I can upgrade and I get SD-WAN on that existing technology. Um, and don't forget, in the side of managed service providers, a lot of those people are very Cisco-centric, very a lot of engineering staff, a lot of designers, a lot of architects, still very focused on Cisco as a technology set, so they are going to be wanting to do that. Um, so it is very important for MSPs. Now, there are other MSPs for, you know, the cost of deploying a Cisco router makes very little sense. If you're delivering just a managed service, it makes much more sense to do it the other way around. Uh, so I think you'll see this bifurcation of MSPs. Some of them will want to go with these low-cost appliances, to reduce the per site cost, and that will make other SD-WAN solutions more attractive or at least worth considering. But at the same time, the institutions themselves will be pushing it back against non-Cisco because many of them are very Cisco-centric organizations. Third thing that I think is really important in this announcement with iOS XE is the ability to integrate or to cross-integrate. That is, uh, you can have the SD-WAN code on a Cisco ISR, ISR router, but you can also have SD-WAN for some stuff and routed functionality, that integration. You can have both at the same time. Now, um, that can be very valuable for people. I think there's a couple of things going on here. One way is that historically we haven't been able to be very trusting of Cisco producing new products or we feel that there's a lot of risk in changing networks that they're prone to failure or it's very risky to fiddle with routing protocols and things like that. That's the reality. So I think a lot of people are actually very frightened or fearful of upgrading a Cisco network for fear that it will just collapse and die. And so offering people a gradual upgrade process um, also allows them to skill up, to adapt to the new environment without changing everything. Like this whole idea of mentally attacking a project and tearing down the entire network, that's not such a great idea. So uh, Cisco knows this, of course. They, I'm sure that they've spent plenty of resources out there doing market research and getting that in there. So I imagine that they're looking at the history of poor code quality, looking at you know whether they've got it right this time, what's the code quality of this thing, we don't know. But it's much easier to give customers a way to roll back, roll forward, that is to have both running at the same time. And of course this reduces the disruption. Other people deploying SD-WANs may have to fiddle around a little bit with it. In my opinion though, it's still the best way to deploy an SD-WAN would be to move those older routers out and replace them with newer devices, run two networks together, so over here is your you know, your routed network, and over here is an SD-WAN network, and mesh them back to the central point. Whereas what Cisco's putting together is a place where you have both networks running together, and SD-WAN is on top. 
This solution reduces the complexity in my opinion. So you've got all of your SD-WAN stuff just happening over here and here's your legacy router network, it's being left alone. So no need to change this, just leave it and have the SD-WAN over here and you keep working on that. Whereas Cisco wants you to overlay it. I think this is a much more complex solution and much riskier idea. You are relying very heavily on the code to be right. You're trying to build a technically complex solution where the routing protocols and the SD-WAN protocols must integrate together. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. Like as a technical challenge, that's really exciting because they're gonna be fiddling around with OSPF and BGP and ejecting routes and it's gonna be mega fiddly and lots of, loads of fun getting that to work. But Viptela's V managed platform uh, is very good and it's going to be able to give you a lot of opportunities there. But I do feel that this solution may suffer from overly technical complexity and that might be an issue. We'll see how that washes out. Cisco did try to do this before with IWAN and struggled and ultimately had to abandon the IWAN idea. I think the Viptela solution has a lot more capabilities and we'll just see how it works out. Hi, I'm Greg Farrow from the Packet Pushes. Thanks for listening to me talk on about this. If you've liked this and more, head on over to packetpushes.net and I look forward to seeing you there.